spending time with her husband, friends, family, including her 12 grandchildren. In her spare time, she connects and celebrates with the women involved in motorsports, taking you behind the wall about their journey of life, racing, and how they juggle everything to make it all work. Welcome to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Strap in, window nets up, the pedals are down, and when the green flag drops, we go. Hello, everyone. This is Melinda Russell with Racing Girls Rock Podcast. And I have a special guest today. Sherry is with me. And Sherry does a magazine. So she and I have a lot of things in common. And I can't wait to hear her story and, and about more about the magazine that she does. So Sherry, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So Sherry, first, let's just start with um, a little bit about yourself and um, like where you live, your family, your pets, whatever you want to share so that people can know a little bit more just about who you are. Okay. Well, I live in Akatia Wells. It's in the desert in East San Diego County. There's an 85,000 acre off-road park right across the highway from where we live. We have uh, 50 acres here, and we also, in addition to publishing the magazine, we operate an off-road camp for kids from disadvantaged families. So we, we do a day camp. We, we bring groups out about six to eight times a year, and the kids ride motorcycles, and our lives pretty much re revolve around motorcycles. I don't personally ride, but I support all of my family members uh, my husband, my son, my grandkids, and all of the kids who visit here. Okay, awesome. Well, my husband and I are both motorcycle people. I actually got my motorcycle license at the age of 50 and um, wow. had, had my awesome. own motorcycle until about three years ago, and I had back surgery, and I just really can't ride like I used to, so I sold my motorcycle, and at some point, we'll get a gold wing, and I can ride in comfort um, behind my husband, but for now, I just let him ride. So um, yeah, that's interesting. I know you're going to know probably about Glamis. Have you ever heard of? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my husband had always wanted to see Glamis. And so a year ago, we had gone to California and we came back and made a little detour and drove um, kind of through the sand dunes or how, whatever that is they call them. And for as far, uh, as, yes, the, that's what yeah, as far as the eye can see, there was nothing but sand. And so when you said 85,000 yeah, 85, acres across the street from you, I can't imagine um, how big that is. But that's yeah, it's really a cool. lot. And the desert where we live, it's different from the sand dunes over at Glamis, which is probably about an hour to an hour and a half away um, from us, but we call this hard packed desert and there's mud hills and, and it's just a different kind of desert, but uh, everyone has a lot of fun out there. It sounds, it sounds like more my type of riding rather than on the loose sand. That, that wouldn't have been that fun unless we had, we do have a, a dune buggy, but for the motorcycle riding and that, it sounds like um, what you have is, a little bit more up my alley, what I would have enjoyed had I been able to keep my motorcycle. So Sherry, tell me how you got mm -hmm. started being involved, loving motorcycles, and then doing the magazine. Uh, the motorcycles came at the same time as I met my husband because he rode motorcycles. So I liked what he liked. And uh, he rode in the canyon across the street from the house. We grew up in the neighborhood together and we were teenagers when we met. So we got married as teenagers and just a few years later, he was getting involved in some racing. It was actually offered car racing at the local speedway, not too far away from where we lived. And we were looking for ways to help promote those events and kind of came up with the idea of, well, let's do a publication. We weren't really sure if it was a newsletter, a newspaper, a magazine. We just knew we were going to put it together and put some articles in it and help promote the races at this racetrack. And so that's really how it got started. That was in 1982. 
I think our first issue was uh, 12 pages. And so we've, we've been going ever since. Wow, that's, that's very cool. So I have a newspaper background. I owned a weekly newspaper for about 10 years back in Illinois where I grew up. And um, I also did a newspaper for the Illinois Federation of Republican Women, which I was involved in. So um, lots, of, lots of good stories, you know, about people. And I'm assuming that's what your magazine is about, too. It tells people's stories and promotes probably racing events. Um, tell us more about what's in your magazine. We're, we're what I consider very reader oriented. Every month we have a special reader theme where the readers can send the photos in. We have information about um, political things that affect our sport because they're always looking for ways to try to shut down the off-road sport. We cover the local racing scene and focus mainly on the amateurs. Um, you know, occasionally we'll have pictures of the pros, but we try to we try to get the people who are reading the magazine to be the ones who are in it. So they're going to see themselves and they're going to see their kids. Um, a really interesting story. We used to go and do trade shows. We'd, we'd set up a display of vintage motorcycles and we'd hand out the magazine for free. When we were traditional print, we've recently um, transitioned over to, to digital. But a, a family came up and they were telling me that, that uh, somebody had picked up one of our magazines at the show and had it at home. And their little three-year-old was looking through it. And he said, I'm in this magazine. And they, you know, they ignored him. They fear, what does he know? You know, his picture's not going to be in a magazine. But he kept insisting he was in this magazine. So they went and looked. And sure enough, it was one of our special reader features. I think it was what we call our back to the desert issue, where when desert season rolls around in the fall, readers would send in a whole lot of pictures from their desert trips. And some of their friends had sent in some pictures of their family. They didn't know it. And the little boy was in the magazine. <laughs> and they became subscribers. And I think they've been like lifelong readers. And so I just really love that story. And we have pictures like from three years old, from infants, all the way up to 80, 90 year old. And I, I think our average reader, I was looking at a, our Facebook readership. And it looks like it's between uh, 40 and 65 is our average age of our readers. Yeah, that's and both that, men and women. Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. That's that's the age group that we're used to. That's what we we like to do. We like to read, and you know, the younger ones are all on their phones, which I'm on my phone a lot too. But um, yes, that's that's probably a a good age range that I, I also reach, but I reach a lot of younger girls as well because we do the same thing. I publish stories about women in motorsports that are just your average lady that races at a local track and um, not really focusing on the famous ones as much, although we do once in a while, but they all have a story, don't they? And they all like to tell their story and share it. That's, yes, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. And so I don't know if we've mentioned the name of the magazine no, for your listeners, but it's called SNS Off Road Magazine. And when we originally started it, we called it San Diego Off Road Magazine. That's where we were from, San Diego County. And then about 10 years ago, I believe it was in 2010, we had incorporated as SNS Publishing um, for Stephen Sherry, which is our names. So we decided we needed to get the uh, San Diego out of the title because it was limiting us as we were doing trade shows outside of the county. And so we just changed it to SNS Publishing. And our website is ssorm.com. People can go on that and then click the super digital link. And once the, the virus shut down, we thought we were temporarily going to transition to super digital. But it's turned out to be so beneficial because we've gone from being a, a 36 page tabloid that's mostly black and white to a 100 page digital publication that's all full color. Mm -hmm. And the, the readers are really enjoying seeing the extra large photos that we couldn't do before. And then for those who still wanted to have a print option, we have it on Amazon in book form. 
so they can order a copy on Amazon. So they do still have that print option. Okay, that's very cool. So I love the digital options. You know, I was a, I'm a, the kind that I like to go to Barnes and Noble and I like to hold the book and I, you know, I too had a newspaper, but I've transitioned to digital really easily because I, you can reach so many more people and you can do so much more. You can have unlimited pages really um and share more stories and like you said exactly. yeah bigger pictures and color pictures and and it really opens up the things that you can do in your magazine and so i haven't heard of super digital i'll have to ask you about that later and hear hear more about what that is but um yeah. i made that up yeah i made that up so that it sounds more exciting <laughs> oh okay very good well i like that i might have to steal that from you so sherry That's fine what do what is your role in the magazine do you write the stories and take the pictures what is what do you do and then what does your husband do oh my husband's just whispering to me to say i do everything <laughs> i just about i don't really though um what i do i i write uh one column a month i have a column called sherry's turn and then i do the editing of all of the other articles that are submitted and then I do the actual production um, of putting it together to submit it before to the printer now to upload the digital format. So I, I'm on my laptop probably eight to 10 hours every day. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, one thing I would like, oh, and what he does is, well, he inspires me with uh, things to write about, which is generally complaining about him in a good natured way. <laughs> and, um, and he does all of the proofreading and and we just have kind of a running joke that he just loves to tear the work apart and send it back to me with this is wrong and that's wrong and fix this but he's got a really good eye to catch the things that i'm missing because i might be rushing to meet a deadline and get the pages put together and then of course he's the one that that has brings the off-road experience into it so he knows what's authentic and and you know if there's things that don't sound right that maybe and somebody has submitted. So he's able to check all of that. And he, um, and when he's not doing that, he restores vintage motorcycles. And so a lot of times we'll write about that or maybe um, he'll do an article about that occasionally. But something we branched off into last year is also book publishing, which I hope we could talk about a little bit. Yeah, okay. um, we started a, a Okay, so we started a series for middle grade readers. It's called Moto Mysteries is the name of the series. And the books are patterned after authentic desert legends. The setting is the family moved to the desert, their dirt bike riding family. And the first book is called The Skeleton and the Lantern. They're available on Amazon. And that is an authentic legend. If people look that up as a desert legend, they can read what the real legend is. And we kind of gave a modern twist to it. And then the second one is called, uh, let me check that one out, Ghost Lights of Dry Brook, which is an authentic legend, but I changed the name of the town because the towns are fictional in the book. And we're working on book three right now. And so we're excited about branching off into the, the book publishing business too, in addition to the magazine. Now, I think that's really cool. So I had, I had somebody talk to me one time about writing uh, books for little kids about racing, you know, Robbie the Racer or Sherry the Racer or whatever. And, um, oh, yeah. and that would be kind of fun yeah. too, just little short, store you know little short books for younger kids and you know it's a time thing but um i i love that idea and you can buy those books on amazon you said yes you can if you go on and search moto mysteries all three of them will pop up now i say there's book one and two in the actual series but i did at christmas time i did what i called a little mini mystery that was only 60 pages long and it was called the Christmas Miracle. And it's again, it's set in the desert with motorcycles. And I've, I've gotten good feedback from people. And what's interesting by you thinking about doing a series for little kids, I had some comments on Facebook because we also have a Facebook page called Moto Mysteries. 
and somebody said, do you have any of these for younger kids with pictures? And I don't. And like you say, it, it's a good idea, but there's only so much time. But right. if you did something like that, and Amazon makes it so doable now, you know, if, it's just easy to publish on there. I mean, I say easy. If you know how to put together a book and you know how to, you know, put it on there. I took an online class to learn how to do all of that, but because I was already publishing the magazine, I did know how to do the production of a publication. But what I mean as far as it, to be a self-publisher or a small publishing company, you don't have to print thousands of books and warehouse them and ship them out. They do it all for you. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's going to prompt me to investigate that a little bit a little bit more because I happen to know a young gal who would make a great illustrator for that. So um, maybe, maybe you're going to have encouraged me here. <laughs> yes. And I will send you the link to this course that I took because it was well worth the, the cost of it. And I have access to the course for a year and really, really good as far as just walking you through from start to finish, you know, just how to do it, how to set up your Amazon author account, how to publish the book, how to market it, really good. Okay, that sounds great. So um, so when you, you have all these stories in the magazine, do other people write them and send them to you and then you put the magazine together or do you actually do a lot of the writing of the stories yourself? I don't do a lot, and, and we're fortunate that all of these years, 38 years, we've always had people that want to submit things. We have a very small um, freelance budget, so I think we have one or two people that get paid, but the others are usually, for instance, um, the president of a local club that needs to get their news out all of the time, especially that's when they're involved in the land use, like trying to keep land open. It's been open for decades, but environmentalists are trying to shut it down. So those kind of organizations, they'll submit their news to us and we'll run them. Um, race promoters, they want their coverage out there. And so they've got people, I, whether, I don't know whether they pay them or volunteer, but they get them to submit us the articles and the photos. And then just people, you know, readers in general that might have a story that they want to they wanna tell and they write it and submit it to us. And so it's worked out over the years we've always had. Um, we, we met at one of the shows we were at, we met a man who calls himself the four by four coach and he does four by four training and he writes a regular column. And so we started printing his column regularly too. So we try to have something for every type of off-road vehicle. Um, of course, motorcycles are our passion, but we, we cover all of it. Okay. That's, that's awesome. So what I do is I submit a questionnaire to the gals who want to be in the magazine and they fill out the questionnaire and then I write the story from the questionnaire. So a lot of times they write so well that I just, you know, incorporate their quotes and things in it. But um, in order to have that many pages, I, I was thinking there's no way you could be writing all that yourself. You'd be up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So Oh, that's, no. that's good to know because <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of work yeah so do you have yeah, people that advertise we do like, have go ahead yes yes you and that's what pays for it is the advertising and i would say that's my weakest point i'm just not a salesperson mm -hmm. um but we've managed to survive all these years and the ads come in and some of our advertisers have been with us for decades and I really appreciate them. And so we, I do a lot of um, online marketing, soliciting advertising. Back before the internet, it was you know on the phone, calling, calling, calling. I remember one time when our kids were growing up, we homeschooled all our kids. And so they're all four at the kitchen table doing school and I'm in my little desk that's not far from there and I'm calling advertiser after advertiser, asking them to advertise. And after about the 10th call, one of my kids says, mom, has anyone said yes? <laughs> yeah. And I guess even they were noticing, I was getting a lot of no's, but we've gotten enough yeses to keep going all these years. Yeah, yeah, that, that what was- What about you? Do you have advertising? My, 
that would be my weakest point as well because I don't like asking people for things. And even though I know that it would mm -hmm. be a big benefit to them to be in the magazine because not only that, we have a podcast and we are going to be doing events where they could be, you know, sponsors at the events. But that is not my favorite thing to do either. Um, and so I have to kind of force myself to do that. But when you do share what you're doing with people, and you're, I'm sure you find this too, they love what you're doing and they want to be a part of it. But it's a lot of times they just don't know about it. And so you have to be the one to say, in my head I say, I have to educate them and let them know what I'm doing. Then it's their choice, yes or no. But if they don't know about it, they can't be a part of it. So the same goes for you, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. And when we made this transition um, from the traditional print to the super digital, well, we had a, a ridiculously low um, introductory price. We called it the COVID-19 special and they could get in for $19. And so I had quite a few, I, that, was, that was kind of an easy sale. Now once I, after three months of that, when I told them now you're gonna pay the regular rates, that wasn't so easy. But um, we had a lot of new interest when we made that transition. So that was nice to know. And you probably find this as well with the digital, but I like that we can do the live links to their websites, that we can embed the video if, you know, if they have a video. So there are definitely are a lot of advantages to digital. Yeah, there, re there really is. And, and you know, as an old school person, I really didn't hesitate going to digital because when I started the magazine in 2017, I talked to several people um, uh, that, you know, publishers of magazines and they're like, go digital, don't even do it in print, just go straight to the digital, that's where it's at and that's where it's gonna be. So mine has been digital since, you know, since the first issue in 2017, but, um, you know, they can print it, it oh, comes to the PDF and print it, so, they can still print out their story if they want to, and and that that works great. So, um, so Sherry, tell me, um, where what do you see down the road? Are you going to keep doing the magazine? Do you have somebody that's that's in training that's going to help take over at some point, or is this a long term thing that you're looking to do? I have nobody in training. Um, none of the younger generations in our family really seem to have an interest. Um, they have an interest in the sport, but the, you know, writing or publishing doesn't seem to be their passion. So right now, I just figure I'm doing it until I'm gone, and then I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Too, somebody's so. there to. Yeah, to grab it and run with it. They can do that. I hope they'll follow our policies. We have um, a very family-friendly publication, and we've always been strict all 38 years that we don't publish, um, you know, pictures of women dressed inappropriately. We don't include anything about alcohol, even, even down to when there were races that were sponsored by alcoholic beverage companies we wouldn't print the name of that and we won't print foul language and so i would just hope if someone comes along after i'm gone and picks up and runs with it i hope they'll honor you know the values that we started it with and, and continued it with all these years well and that's probably one of the reasons that it's so popular sherry is because it is family friendly and we don't see very much of that anymore even the the Disney movies are not always as family friendly as what we think they used to be. So um, I appreciate that about what you're doing, and and yeah. there'll be there'll be someone that'll take the take the torch and and carry it on. Hopefully for both of us at some point. So, um, so remind us again, yeah. how can somebody yeah, subscribe, so. and where do they go to do that? They go to our website, which is ssorm.com, and on there, they can find a link. There will be one that says Super Digital. They can click there, 
they I also have one that just says digital and that's the digitized copy of our previous 36 page publications super digital is the ones that are 100 or more pages also on the home page of our website they can scroll down a little bit and they'll find a, a box that where they can sign up to get the super digital link emailed to them every month and then we also offer a uh, subscription basis. Now everyone can read it for free, but what the, we call it the inner circle membership. If you sign up for that and buy that membership, you get the link five days before it's put out for the public. And so I've had people sign up for that who are the racers that know the photographers at their races submit photos to us. And, they want to be the first ones, I think, to get to see all of those photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do a similar thing. My members get the link and all too before anybody else. So we have we have lots of things in common, Sherry. Oh, that's great. We really do. That's nice to hear. Yeah. And also, when they're on our website, they can also find information. I have some links to Amazon for the Moto Mystery Series too, if they're interested in that. Or I have a website set up for the Moto Mysteries. It's actually my personal name, Sherry, S-H-E-R-R-I, Kukla, K-U-K-L-A.com. Okay, all right, I'll put that in the show notes so that when they are listening to the podcast, they'll be able to, ch to check those, um, those websites and those links out so they can, they can find you. Okay. So is there anything I haven't asked you about that you'd like to share either about yourself or your husband, your family, your magazine, your books, anything at all? Actually, there is. Thank you for asking. We have one other book that we just recently published, and it's a compilation of articles from the early 90s, and, no, mid-90s and early 2000s. My husband is one of the authors of those. We call this book, These Are the Good Old Days, Motorcycle Memories of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And so the, the 1950s decade was written by a gentleman named Fred Smith. His nickname was Bro. He unfortunately has passed away before we were able to complete this kind of project. We came up with the idea 20 years ago, but Amazon is what made us be able to do it now. So it just came out this month and it's about 170 pages and we're getting really good feedback and it's just the stories of these men growing up in the early days of motorcycling and, and their fun experiences. Some of them, you know, kind of, uh, goofing around, maybe bordering on getting in trouble. When somebody read my husband's section, they, they sent an email and they said, I'm wondering why he's not incarcerated. But, you know, it's the teenage things they're doing on their motorcycles. And, and um, it's, a really, it's a really fun read. There's some sad things in it. The man who wrote the section of the 1960s, he actually had turned pro race and pro racer and then was fate, or not fatally, but was injured and became a quadriplegic and lived that way for 40 some years until he passed away. So there's some very serious stuff in there, but there's things to laugh about. And, and what it does is it reminds people of their early days of riding. And so they can also find that on our website. There's a press release we published on there that we just released. And then there's the link to get that on Amazon as well. Okay. That's, that's and I told my husband because when he's editing, okay. When he's editing the Moto Mysteries books for me as well, he's just sometimes brutal and, and even makes jokes about things that didn't sound right. And we have a good time going over it. But then when we decided we were going to publish his book, I go, now it's my turn, <laughs> you know, to edit his. And we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, now the red pen's in your hand, Sherry, instead of his, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Right. <laughs> well, Sherry, it's really been a pleasure talking with you today. I, I really feel like we have a lot of things in common. If we lived closer together, we'd probably be good friends because we, we do a lot of things the same or similar and right. have a passion for a lot of the same things. And so um, this has been a real pleasure talking with you today. So 
Is there anything, uh, any last words, anything at all that you would like to share? Uh, just to tell people, if you've got a dream that's something you've been thinking about doing for a long time, whether it's 20 minutes or 20 years, just get started and do it. It doesn't matter if, you know, if you're 10, 20, or 70. Go, go for your dreams. That's, that's good advice for any, anyone of any age. I totally agree with you. So, well, um, tell your husband thank you for, I think he must be sitting in the background listening and thank you for taking time today to be on the podcast. I really appreciate that. And, and I hope that we'll be able to stay in touch because I think we have a lot of, like I said, we have a lot of things in common. I'd like to stay in touch with you, Sherry. I would too, and I want to check your publication out. And if you can let me know uh, when the podcast will be posted, I'd like to share that on our social media pages. Absolutely. I'll let you know, and I'll, I'll share the link with you. So um, thank you again, and um, we'll be in touch. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you for listening to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at International Women's Motorsports Association or on Instagram and Twitter at the IWMA Nation. And if you know someone that should be on our show, drop us an email at IWMA Nation at gmail.com.